Hey everyone, <laughs> welcome to the third anniversary stream. <laughs> I hope you can hear us. Hello, hello. Hello there. Hey. Hello. Oh god, there's nothing in chat. Okay, they can hear us. Oh, amazing. I was nervous for a second. <coughs> hey, cool, awesome. Thanks for coming, everyone. And but also celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas, and we'll also have a new year soon. Um, but yeah, we'll quickly start with an introduction. After that, we'll briefly give you some goodies about what you can maybe expect next year and also what happened this year. Okay, um, we'll start with uh, myself. I am Hanna slash Sina slash Ganas, lots of names. Um, I am the administrator slash the developer with, of Classroom 1 alongside of Lada. And um, we also have Majora here, and Radical, and Windhunter, and they can also introduce themselves in that order. So go ahead, Majora. Yes, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Majora. I'm the project coordinator and the community manager for the project. Uh, and we have five lovely people here today to share the plans for next year and look back a little bit on, uh, on last year. Yeah, so hey everyone, I'm uh, Radical X, one of the game's faction designers, primarily in charge of PvP content, but I'm also assisting on PvE and map design related matters. So yeah, I'm glad to join you today. <laughs> Lala, go ahead. Uh, hi guys, I'm Lala here, also alongside uh, Hanna, administrator and uh, lead developer. And uh, I'll be joining today on uh, on the stream. Hello, I'm yeah. Right. yeah, I'm Wind Hunter. I am the lead designer for the project, so I'm in charge of map design, faction design, and game design. Awesome. Okay, so um, I hope that everyone is now familiar with who's talking here. And before we get into the goodies, we'll give you a brief overview of what happened in 2023. And for that, we will start with our stats. So Lada has put some nice stats from database here, which he can now explain a bit and go over and just give you a bit of a, a feeling for what happened in 2023. Yeah, so I mean, an entire year has passed and uh, you guys have been uh, busy in game. Um, we, can, we can see that in total, you guys have played almost uh, a little a little bit over 27 years of in-game playtime. Um, so yeah, that, that's quite an achievement, uh, if I do say so myself. <laughs> uh, lo lots of matches started, uh, almost 800,000 of them. Uh, this includes any any form of matches and uh, not not far behind. And we also have actions sold, almost also uh, an equal amount, 650,000. <laughs> lots of cards being traded, it's nice to see. Um, to have uh, a more lively economy. And uh, yeah, other activities, Reforged and Boosters uh, opened also uh, a huge amount, both with uh, over 50, uh, 500,000 uh, in game. And yeah. uh, quite, quite the numbers, quite the numbers. Yeah, we've been pretty busy. Uh, it was a busy year for us as well. Uh, we uh, had quite a, a couple of patches released. Um, if you uh, well, I was going over the the readback for the year. I noticed that cosmetics actually released this year, so that was introduced in January. We had some new cards released. Uh, we had an Easter event that was very uh, popular, um, and we had the addition of the nature RPVE faction and the overhaul of the community maps. Um, and yeah, we released four new cards and one promo card. And maybe uh, Radical and Winston can go over them and uh, explain if uh, we liked how they turned out. Sure, I would say uh, I'll actually start not left to right, but I'll start with Sanctuary. And that's because Sanctuary, I think, was the first one released of the year. Um, along with, uh, did it come out with Worldbreaker Gun? Uh, uh, yeah, Worldbreaker Gun and Archwalker <laughs> and Sanctuary were in the same patch. Yeah. Wild. So Sanctuary kind of finished off our kind of partial or half rework of nature, which was really kind of cool to see. Um, you know, because you got to have a... We kind of want every faction to have this kind of apex card where 
you know, you have like a tier four spell or something else, the kind of equivalent to it. So we added Code of Protection for Frost, and now we added Sanctuary for um, Nature. You know, eventually we hope to do some same thing for Fire and for Shadow. Um, so that was kind of cool to see kind of that was a kind of a cool achievement. Was that released also with the Forest Elder rework, which I was very proud of, um, as well as some of the other changes in that sense. And then I, I personally think World Breaker Gun promo was awesome. I think Tweedo and Spirit Alpha did a great job. I think the achievement was incredibly fun um, and kind of a little a wild idea that whoever came up with that um, on the team was kind of amazing. Um, anyone who hasn't done it, I would just say it's less hard than you think it is. And then I guess so the final one for that patch of Raven Arcwalker. I just kind of, I kind of like just like this card. I love the, I love the aesthetics of the card, like how it works, like how it looks. I kind of love the Raven deck. Um, the first suggestion I ever made, actually, for PVE card changes was for um, Ravenheart. So that's actually part of one of the suggestions that got me added to the team. So it's kind of cool to take the Ravenheart deck and to add the Raven Arcwalker deck to it. So it's kind of really near and dear to my heart. Um, so, and I think it turned out really well. Um, I think it was insanely expensive when it came out, but besides that, I'm kind of very happy with the card in general. I also think the effect is really cool with the bird flying around for the Hour of Corruption. That was great done by our artist Titan. Yeah, so essentially this was five new cards which were released, but um, it's a bit boring, right? Like We can't just stop here, we have to keep releasing new cards, which is why we also want to announce our next patch today, which will be on the... Well, no exact date, but in January 2024. Currently, um, this is still up like to debate when it's exactly releasing, mid-January, end of January. Something like that can be the ballpark here. But uh, for more details, you can just follow our community updates and our forums, and you will hear more. As for the content you can expect here, you can, again, expect new cards, new um, UI features. There's also a new game mode we're adding. It's called uh, RPVE 9.5. And maybe Radical can also talk a bit here about this new game mode, because he's the one who spent a lot of time here. Yeah, exactly. So the, the initial suggestion is something that came up like three or four years ago in, in the forums, where people were talking about that the jump of difficulty between RPV9 and RPV10 is too high. And then we also took a look at the stats and that was just supporting this uh, this perception where we have like, if you took, let's take a look at like four player multiplayer maps, we had like a 86% win rate in RPV nines and like below 20% on RPV tens. And um, the reasons for that is that RPV 10 has layout changes and you can't really practice them in any other environment in RPVE. And um, it's also the only difficulty where you face spawners on T1 in general and the jump of camp strength is pretty uh, pretty large so um yeah to just uh, help players with um getting into rpv tens if they're interested in that we wanted to give uh, like make a new difficulty for rpve um which is um between 9 and 10 for for that reason and that's why it's also what it's called like 9.5 um and um furthermore also giving advanced players a new difficulty to play on as um Many players also complain that RPV9 sometimes tends to be too easy, especially when you had like easier presets. Um, and yeah, that would be an appropriate challenge to do like the daily farming for quests and so on. And um, yeah, the main changes we performed will be that we are using the RPV10 layouts um, while making the camps uh, a little bit easier so people can actually get some practice there. And we also removed spawners from the uh, row around tier three camps. So the large jump in uh, camp strength is a little bit, um, a little bit smaller and um, people can actually uh, progress more consistently through the early game, which also should give them better practice and just a better experience overall. Um, as like wave income also led to uh, camps getting pulled towards your uh, your base and if that happens in the early game and you were not prepared that ended up to like a loss straight up and um, yeah this is where rpv 9.5 is hopefully supposed to help and um, i'm really looking forward to see this released yeah so this will also be our first new uh, official game mode which you can play or like game mode adjustment uh, mostly we've been working so far on small minor adjustments to maps or smaller fixes but this is like really new content you can just explore here um 
this will of course be available in all the different factions, also like the fire and nature factions. And you can also then play these maps with new cards that will be released. So we will also add some new Lost Source cards. I posted the link in the chat here, um, which you can watch. This was teased already eight months ago. And yeah, we've been basically working on this since then. And now it's in a good state where we can promise you that it will ship essentially in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I'd like to add to that because I already see in the chat, like, what are the new cards? Uh, the reason that we often don't announce or are not able to announce when a card will exactly release is because we're, most of our new cards are actually treading new territory. Uh, for example, Tectonic Shift, which we announced quite a while ago, uh, transform a building, but that has weird interactions with certain buildings that you would not expect. <laughs> uh, same with Bedrock, it's also a difficult card and some other cards we have in the, in the works as well. Um, so we try not to announce them too early, uh, but we're still working on them. Same with the, uh, with the other cards we have announced. Um, so we try to include as many as we can, and otherwise you'll have to wait a little bit and then they will be in the batch after that. Yeah. And to maybe already get you hyped a bit for the patch, um, there's also another new feature, which is called tutorial missions. So this is more for the new players. Basically, if you know the game for the first time you play it, there's like the um, just question mark symbols of the buttons you can click, but nobody really does that. So we added some like new small quests, so to say, which you can just complete on the first time and then just learn how all the different parts of the game work, how the different UI features work. And maybe you will even find some new features which you weren't even aware we added yet. And yeah, it's definitely an opportunity for even old time players to just explore and see, okay, what has been added? What are some features I can use here? Yeah, and the cool thing about that is it helps us be able to give some new players some new cards and explain some features to them. Because I think anyone who's played Battleforge recently and hasn't kind of remembered can say that the tutorial map itself is kind of insufficient for just being thrown into the forge and said, all right, figure it out from here. So the hope is with some new tutorial missions, we can help new players or maybe have some friends who you want to get introduced to the game, but were kind of intimidated by it, um, should now have kind of a step-by-step -step guide teaching them some of the more advanced features. Yeah, and um, <laughs> to test the knowledge of the veteran players who might be watching, we prepared a small quiz for you. And uh, for the quiz, maybe Majora can explain a bit how we designed it and what you can expect so you can get ready. Yeah, sure. Um, so I have to give some credit to uh, Ultra Lord as well. He helped me with this as well. Uh, basically, what we have done as a small quiz segment to give away some uh, some codes is we have taken a screenshot from a map. We removed the UI elements. We might have zoomed in a little bit, maybe even turned the camera a bit. Um, and the idea is that you can guess in the Twitch chat which map this is. You get one guess per person, and the first person to guess it correctly uh, we'll get a code at the end of, uh, of the stream, uh, which will contain one of every new card we added this year, uh, excluding the promo world breaker gun, of course. Um, the moderator Dutchy will be the, the judge who gives the first answer. Um, and you can contact him later with your in-game name and we'll take care of the rest. Yeah. Okay. Is everyone ready? I sure hope so. So um, you get one guess, first guess wins. Okay, so, well, ready or not, um, the first map will be revealed in three, two, one. See some answers coming in. I'm pretty sure we already have the answer. Yeah, Not we already wrong. have the answer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the answer is it was King of the Giants. <clears throat> and as far as I can tell, uh, Dolivan got it correct pretty quickly as well. Yeah, it's uh, towards the top of the map, which is one of the few areas where there's actually lava and ice uh, combined. All right, let's go to the next map. Okay, everyone ready? Three, two, one, go.
for some people are just randomly naming maps that are absolutely I mean, not correct. <laughs> I mean, all of them is the correct answer. So yeah, that's true. That's true. So. But I, I can I can tell you it's not Mo. <laughs> <laughs> I think I actually guessed that one, didn't I, Madora? Uh, In our, like, pre-session. I, I think you guessed this one, yes. Um, I don't even play the game. So good at it. Yeah. Do I see the answer? Um, I'm not sure. I don't know if anyone's actually got it right. Well, I don't think so. <laughs> there are some close calls, but... but uh... Not the one yet. Oh, I think we got one. Yeah, yeah there we go. Yeah, I don't think he guessed already or she. Uh, yeah, I think we have one. Okay, so the answer is... It was Nightmare's End, and before people start complaining that this lake is also on Nightmare's Shard, it's slightly different. It has more <laughs> flowers and it has no twilight bulbs. Oh, a trick question. Yes. <laughs> Damn, you're so you evil. can expect more of those. Oh no. Okay. All right. So, enough next time one. spent on this one. We have the next one in two seconds. Two, one. funny because Winter, Lara, and Radical haven't seen this quiz before, so I'm curious mm, if they... They can also participate if they want. <laughs> as long as they don't shout the answer, I'm fine. I think, I think I know this one. <laughs> I've been smashing I'm, my head against it. With I'm internally challenge. playing uh, with, yeah, with yeah, myself. <laughs> I see someone say, oh god, I hate this map, so that's a small hint, I guess. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the map you start on middle, okay. <laughs> yeah, I have like a personal challenge on this map that I keep failing, so it's kind of... Yeah, we, uh, we already had the answer uh, oh, uh, that you okay. can tell who was okay. the first one who said it, but uh, yes, we have it. It was Insane God and from the top position. Yeah, everyone always starts actually, yeah, Hannah didn't guess this one because she started this <laughs> Yeah, like, when, like when I developed for the game, right, and I used like the Insane God as a testing map, I just go on the first dot, press ready, press start, and then I'm just down, like, in the down bottom. Like, I would have guessed if you had some random screenshot of this area you can walk into in the bottom right, but like top left, never. No. Yeah. Okay, so, we have the next one in three, <clears throat> two, one. A lot of answers that no, I think the well gives it away. I think I see the correct answer in chat. Yeah, correct answers in okay. chat. Okay, so the answer is it was Slave Master, a bit on the bottom side, I believe. Yeah, you can see in the menu, actually, in the top left, and if you look in the menu app, oh, um, top left, oh, yeah, yeah it's right. basically where slaves are, but this is like after the slaves are cleared out. So. Yeah, I was confused because I made a one also on the bottom left, but this oh. one turned out to be nicer. Sure. Okay. For those people who just tuned in, we're doing a quiz. You have to name the map. Uh, first one who names it correctly wins, but you only have one guess. Okay, so the next one is in three, two, one. How about this is the same map? What were the other desert maps again? Quick, quick. <laughs> yeah, I, f I think at this point I asked Majora, what were the other de desert maps? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Although I did not exclude double maps, so it could be the same map. <laughs> An extra layer oh, to your trick. That she already, uh, yeah. already revealed it now. So I guess we can just reveal it. Yep. So yeah, I think this was a bit easier. Actually, no, I think I guess Convoy. No, here. you had this wrong. You, you yeah, said Convoy. I said, I said Convoy because like, I, I think there's like the sketch where you can basically, you know. Yeah, I won't say anything. I think you just thought it was like a chasm. Oh, yeah. there must be Convoy. This is my least favorite map in the game. I hate Oracle. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> I think most <laughs> of the community knows. 
<laughs> yeah. No, the staff knows because of my constant rants. Okay. Well, if you don't like Oracle, we can just move on to the next map, which will be wheeled in three, two, one. Oh, interesting angle. Yeah. I thought this Oops. one was kind of hard. Ultra Lord made this one, so if you hate it, play him. <laughs> it's kind of a beautiful screenshot. No correct answer yeah. yet. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit of a trick one, mm. right? Depends, it's on the map. I mean, this is a. I, honestly, I kind of got thrown a curveball here, and I saw this. So. No correct answer. I'm also struggling on this one, to be honest. Yeah, I, I thought this was the hardest one, to be honest. Oh, actually, second hardest one. We saved the hardest one for last. Correct answer in the chat, but I'm not sure if he already guessed. I don't think he guessed already. Well, yeah. Well, anyway, yeah, since we have a winner. Yeah. Since we have a winner, the map is. Where's my real button? There it is. The very top camp of Nightmare Shard. Yeah. <laughs> like, this was a bit evil because, like, you just have this tiny corner which no one really looks this, from this angle, right? So. I mean, you take an orb there. I mean, yeah, but then you only show the frost part, so you expect a frost map. So it's like, ugh, yeah, I don't know. Can't give away the goodies for free. Yeah, whenever I think of this map, I don't think of uh, snow. <laughs> yeah. I think of endless vile bloods. <laughs> yeah. That's all I think about on this map. <laughs> yeah, I think enough of vile bloods, enough of snow. The next map is here. Like this one. Looks pretty good. I didn't even know it myself. Ultra Lord gave this one. Yeah. I don't think I had this one. This was also kind of difficult. <laughs> Not gonna lie, it's surprisingly challenging. Oh, it's more challenging than I was expecting. See in the chat the tutorial. I would have, I should have included that one. That would have been a great one. Yeah, that's my first. Uh, was my first thought too, to be honest. But then I didn't see the cliffs on the left and the right side. Actually, I can All right. kind of between, I kind of between two maps. Oh, uh, I think, I think you have the answer in the chat. Yeah, so you can guess uh, Wind Thunder. Yeah, I thought it was. Uh, this is the, this. Yeah, I thought it was the um, evil eye at the end of encounters. Yep, that's correct. correct answer. I was between, yeah. Oh god, did I un unreveal it? Oh. Here you go. <coughs> yeah, that's a good guess. I had no clue. Okay, so... Um, this one took a while, but we move right on the next one. Which will be revealed in 3, 2, 1. I think I knew this one instantly, actually. I think the, yeah, this, this, one you knew this is kind of a wild angle to take on this map, though. Yeah, I think this yeah, map has true. a certain vibe. <laughs> whatever, whatever uh, map this is, I, I kind of like the screenshot. <laughs> I love the serpent fountains. Yeah, Big fan they're of awesome. Them. Yeah. All right, we got the answer in chat. Yeah, by our dear Leverman, and he answered Dwarven Riddle. I don't know. I think I've played this map the most of the four player maps. I feel like it's the most fun for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> I think this map is kind of wild because, like, half the time you play it, someone just like completely speed runs it, and then everyone else is just like desperately hoping not to die. Yep. Like I, I got carried on this map the first time I ever played it back in EA days, and I was just panicking, defending, and then suddenly the map was over, and I was like, "What? I won?" <laughs> I mean, yeah. Like, honestly, I feel like the defending path map is super fun. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Okay, so we will have the ninth uh, map now, which will Nine be revealed in three, two, one. Ooh. This feels very obvious. 
I think I got this one actually. Uh, I think no, you the... got it wrong. No, I got it wrong. <laughs> 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 it's back to the play. Shit. <laughs> Yeah, most people know this one apparently. I mean, it's, it's the most prominent feature of the map. Wait, did I not guess convoy? No. Okay, I guess. I'm not sure what you guessed though. <laughs> what did you guess? I, I would have guessed convoy. I think her her reply was like, "What the fuck is this?" Yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, right. to be fair, it's it can be kind of challenging if you don't play the game. So. Yeah. All right. Okay. Last cool. one. Last one. Are you ready? Let's be revealed in three, two, one. <laughs> oh, I think. Um... I think we got it right. Someone, we, have, we, have so we, have, we have an answer. answer. We have an answer. We got it right. We have an answer. Oh. Okay. So, the answer is... What, oh, who should I give the honor? When Tanta, I'll give you the honor. Me? Yeah. The answer is... The answer is... It's a new map. <laughs> it was a trick question. And actually someone got it because someone said it's a new map, so... Fair enough. <laughs> So because we don't have a winner for the tenth round, everyone wins. So oh, wait, what? Oh. <laughs> what? Okay, that's such a scam. Someone guessed it. Oh. These Scarlet people are so greedy. <laughs> so that was a very smooth transition to our next part of the stream. Yeah. So um, in the top, you can actually find a code you can redeem in the marketplace. So if you just write it down, you can also redeem it later. It will be valid for like one month. So there's no rush here. Okay, but um, in the next part, we want to talk more about this map and how the design flows for the wind and so on. And for that, I'll just hand over to Wind Hunter and he can take the lead from here on out. You can see some um, screenshots in the background of this map, which kind of just show what's happening here. Cool. So, yeah, I'd say one of the biggest projects we've been working on for basically the last year has been adding, you know, both new game modes like Random PV9, but, you know, mostly for me, new campaign maps. And <clears throat> so there's a lot of kind of available story open in the um, campaign. And especially if anyone's read the Empire kind of prologue and epilogue, um, you can see that like kind of the, ori the original devs clearly had a campaign in mind, but kind of ran out of time to make the story happens so they kind of just jammed all the story into the empire book so we want to go through and our goal is to kind of retell the be the lead up to empire so this is a map that happens before empire and kind of is the setup for the storyline that's going to happen there um in terms of designing it you know we wanted to make um every kind of map in battleforge has kind of like a, a gimmick to it and and also kind of somewhat unique features and right now empire is the only map with lost souls so we thought lost souls enemies would kind of be perfect for the whole situation um additionally we wanted kind of a defensive map because people have been asking us for a lot of defensive content so most of the map resolves around defending against the lost souls until you can protect the people you're supposed to protect which i guess we're supposed to reveal um I don't think we have a screenshot to show them off. Um, I think we left one out <laughs> because one looked a bit too techy and this, these ones looked a bit... Like, we didn't want to reveal everything of the map, so... Yeah, the, the other screenshot had the map goals on them, so we decided not to reveal Oh, okay, that. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> but you can reveal who we are trying to protect. Yes, okay, so the storyline, I mean, I would just say part of the story of, you know, Battleforge is that the Lost Souls are the ones who create the twilight and the lost souls are trapped because the gate of Ashia is closed. And so our new campaign is going to focus on opening the gate of Ashia and freeing the lost souls. And we 
in order to try to find um, how to make the key or where the key is or how to make it, um, we end up stump following the Dwarven Riddle and stumbling upon the last tribe of the Ami. So we are introducing the Ami faction as kind of a friendly faction, similar to how Frost is one of the friendly factions in the campaign. And we will be um, defending them and protecting them and kind of going on like a mini side campaign connected to the Ami, which we also, um, you know, have something else to reveal later in the stream related to the Ami faction. So that's excited. Uh, that's the most I can say, though. And it's not going to be a community map. This is going to be an official campaign map that's going to be on the main campaign. It should hopefully release, you know, with achievements connected to it, you know, it's going to be a two player map. It's actually a lot of the maps we're working on right now are two player maps. So this is an official two player map. This is one of four maps we currently have that are fairly far in development. Yeah. And to keep manage, uh, like to do some ex expectation management, this map will not release the next patch, but we are fairly certain that we will want to bring out the new campaign maps in 2024. But unfortunately, January is a bit tight for that. So you will have to be a bit patient for a bit longer. Okay, so Radical, you also were as a speaker here in the section. Do you have any comments you want to make on the map? I think you were one of the active map testers here as well, right? Yeah, I mainly uh, spend time playtesting the map and adjusting it from a balancing perspective. And um, we are we're not yet finished with this project, but it's also it's progressed pretty pretty well in in the last months. Uh, we also had like lots of uh, helpful feedback from our map testers in that department. Um, and yeah, I think something that I can say already is like when I played the map for the first time. It was really stunning. I think the uh, like the map art and everything is it's just really really good, and I I think it's something to look forward to. Yeah, and this is not the only thing you can look forward to, because we have a second goodie uh, waiting for you in a couple of seconds while I prepare something in the background. So um, as we mentioned already, this map unexpected visitors would be part of a, a bigger campaign, and. We will now jump into a live play session where you can see the next map after unexpected visitors into the jungle. Yeah, so clarify why we're doing this. Uh, basically, two maps are quite far along in development, but into the jungle is way farther along than unexpected visitors. And we wanted to get you guys to show what we have been working on this year. So this will actually be the second map of the new campaign we have planned. <clears throat> so yeah, we will just pace him a bit so and this... play this until the end, but yeah. I'll say, so this map is um, the second in the campaign. Um, this is after you initially rescue the army. Um, and so in this map, the goal is to find the army a new home um, for them to settle inside of. And you have to guide them around the map and protect them along the way. Yeah, what's interesting in this map is also that the enemies are from the nature faction because they are native to the island. Yeah, so this map takes place on... Uh, well, we have many arguments we have over how to call the place. So it's the, the island that Viridia turned into at the end of Ascension. So we thought it'd be kind of cool. Um, it was actually a suggestion of one of our map designers, Amirazi, that would be kind of really cool for the kind of players if instead of the normal you know twilight bandit enemies or even lost souls you know if we could come up with a map where you actually fought against nature enemies similar and we had, we then had a lot available because of the most recent nature random pve that we worked on by the way hana someone in the chat said that the volume of the game is kind of loud uh, yeah, i'm not I sure can, if you I already can, adjusted it i can turn it on a bit <clears throat> So yeah, as you can see, this is a two-player map. So currently we have Anna playing with Radical. And, and I believe... The Radical is making use of the new uh, Soulstone card. Exactly. 
it's it's just a very great card for multiplayer map usage, uh, as it also helps out your ally a lot with the with your shields. It's also worth noting that because this is still in development, the outcries are uh, it's still the moon portrait, and I believe they're not voiced, or if they are voiced, they're like a template UI uh, AI voiced. But we yeah, have... voiced. I can't remember if that's in this version. Um, yeah, exactly. But we we have you know we're currently working on and creating um actual you know campaign line you know voice campaigns um this campaign is somewhat unique too because you know in most campaigns that you play that are two player it's kind of a parallel map structure so think of say convoy or um sunbridge even crusade so it's basically a two-player map where you're playing basically two one-player maps where you can help each other with spells um, we wanted to go for something completely different on this and actually have the players able to play side by side with each other. Oh, no, I and so it's a, it's a unique take on kind of a, a two player map in that sense. A small uh, side to Hannah. There are some people really curious about your uh, most right card uh, that seems uh, playable. I mean, yeah, that's just like my favorite card, you know, just in case I get into trouble and. You know, I would lose. I just play this card and I never know again. <laughs> it's kind of just so like a, that's that's like a test insurance. server. That's a test server only test card that does ten thousand damage on spawn and is neutral tier one. That's yeah. never going to be added to the base game. Kind of looks like this. Yeah, I also <laughs> use it for the screenshot contest because you can just randomly spawn it everywhere. <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty good card, right? And I would uh, make sure you protect your army so they oh, don't die. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> I mean, yeah, touch the demonstrator card in case I get into trouble, just do this and then. <laughs> yeah, just to demonstrate. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> just to demonstrate. I mean, yeah. Because I'm so nice, right? Mm -hmm. I have to satisfy the curiosity of the people. Oh god, my poor army. You have, uh, like, all of them. Not all of them have survived, right? Only a couple of them. <clears throat> I'm not sure if we already touched this Winter and turn, if we are uh, able to say this already, because you mentioned that every map has like a gimmick. Uh, did we tell what the gimmick was? Yeah, so actually, I, I, we're just about to get to the gimmick, so I was waiting. On, no, 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 from, well, the, I mean, from the last one. The unexpected oh, for the last visitors. one. Okay, yeah, so we just saw. So if you notice, there's no wells or orbs on the map. And that's because, well, I mean, there are obviously that, now those ones. But you can't see anymore. So you look below the Razor Leaf, for example. You see there's no orbs, but there's a nice purple light. And what this is, is in the actual world of Battleforge, all of the wells and orbs are created by the Ami. But this is a land where the Ami never were, so they never created any wells or orbs. And so one of the main gimmicks of this map is you have to escort the Ami around the map, and they build the wells and orbs for you. So if we just watch at this end, it'll it'll happen as soon as we kill these um, uh, living towers. And so areas on the map are marked with lights, which show you places where you can bring your army, and then they can kind of build your stuff for you. <clears throat> and another kind of gimmick of the map, or I guess I don't like calling it a gimmick, right? But like it's it's a feature. Kind of every map has unique parts like this is the map has a number of hidden pathways. So you can see here, they're going through a hidden path to the left, and they see a bunch of friendly uh, wind weavers. Yeah, I would collect gold chests, but it doesn't work yet. As you mentioned, it's still in development. <laughs> it doesn't yet. work yet. Not, I'll not just yet. put on a breeding grounds one second. <laughs> I mean, I, for a good measure, I can cast a test strike on the gold chest. <laughs> I've been intimidated. <laughs> We have a Q&A later in the stream, but I saw a question appear if the army faction will be focusing on buildings. Uh, no, it's just a lore reason, basically. Uh, all the army monuments and army power wells are lore-wise created by the army. Um, and this is the only map, I believe, where the army never were. So that's what Wind Hunter meant. Yeah, they're not, build they're not focusing on building as such. Um, but in this case, they are, they are the ones who built um, all the wells and power so just in terms of like an actual story flavor um you should be fine that'll that'll defend itself hannah don't worry yeah cool 
just a bit worried because last time I had to use. Well, I wanted to demonstrate this one, so. And always demonstrating it would be boring, so. I wouldn't. I do not summon. <laughs> I want a house. So. Okay, you can't. You can't. Yes, he you can't. can't. It's never warping. He's yes, still vain. Yes, oh, he she's can. never warping. Okay. Of course he can. <laughs> okay, so the map also has a number of kind of hidden mini bosses. Um, and so this is one of them. Wait, one of our army side. This... Is this Magma Hurler? This is a Magma And Hurler. once you defeat him, he actually transforms the map. This is kind of one of the cool aspects. So he actually he transforms the maps in two different places. You can see in the top left, there's kind of a little, um, like picture in picture, which was showing that there was another uh, secret path which opened up because of this. No, no, it's, it's farther south. You, it's oh, on the map. It's on your map. I, I see it. Yeah, this one. Yes. Yeah, so it, it also clears the trees oh. out of the way and okay. gives you another secret pathway to follow because of because you kind of explored the map and were able to find one of the secret mini bosses. Obviously, it's not that secret because we just showed it off. Um, but there's other things to kind of check out in the sense of the map. Yeah, we won't read all the secrets today in the stream, but um, I think we're up for one more secret, or like I guess just the, this location, and then yes. we call it quits. So you will have this entire bottom half of the map and top right of the map for yourself to explore. Yes. Yeah, when we, when uh, when you first started the map, the first thing I personally got really excited about is the size of the map by just looking at the mini map. That uh, this is a quite large map, and especially <laughs> seeing all the local mechanics and the hidden interactivity, uh, I think that's a really nice touch. No, that's actually a good question. Can you fly over the map? Um, so a lot of the places you can fly over. Any place that shows water, um, you can fly over. Some places are blocked, so like the jungle paths, you can't use fly units through. But that's an example. She's showing a place right there you can fly over. Yeah. Um, also, if you go up Hannah to the base, you're actually fighting. Oh, yes. You can see that there's our new nature tempest enemies. And so that's kind of a new enemy that we just recently added to the game. Um, you can add them in custom maps already, but it's one of the kind of new new things you'll be facing um, as part of this map. One of the house died. Oh, that didn't. Fine. Your harvest to die. No, it's fine. Got a new one. Yeah, and just to clarify, this is just an NPC unit oh, to fight against. There are currently no plans to also release it as a player card. My house are always good. Someone Honestly, ask if this map is easy to clear on solo. But I guess that's a bit too soon to tell. Um, I would basically say they'll have to see for themselves. Um, I would say it's one of the harder kind of solo maps because it's designed for actually the players kind of playing together. But it's definitely possible, and we've definitely in play testing seen people go separate um, uh, ways and be able to clear it. Anyway, so that's actually all we were going to show of the map um, because we don't want to reveal too much. So oh, no. this is one of the kind of many possible paths the player could take to get to the tier three in the map itself. Um, and as you can see, there's actually still a lot, part, lot large amount of the map still kind of dark. Um, one of the key features of the map and the design ideas is that there's a lot of different paths from the initial spawn that the player can follow to kind of get to the different objectives. And so while there are set objectives, there's actually, you know, several different pathways in order to probably get there. And also, I, I would just say, I think the map art is just phenomenally done and the entire map itself is just extremely beautiful. And so we can thank, um, you know, our map artist Rabbit for putting so much work in to, to achieve that. Yeah, like honestly, of some community maps, so like pretty frequently with community maps, you notice like there's often a lack of map art because it's honestly a pretty tedious task to just decorate every tiny detail of the map. So um, I think you can tell a lot of effort went into this map and yeah, it, it pays off. It really feels like an official map. Yeah, someone mentioned in the, in the chat already uh, that they can amuse themselves by just looking at the, at the, at the background, at, at all the art. 
and I found that in the top right there seems to be like this giant uh, statue of uh, uh, yeah uh, uh, in the top left top left oh, top left yeah sure it looks like a, a big almost buff uh, old statue yeah, and I kind of find it amusing <laughs> Yeah, we, we originally wanted that to, like, shoot water out of its mouth, but, like, it really was not happening. You know, like, it kind of, like, fill up the fill up the thing, but it just wasn't happening. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I kind of also really like how, how elevation kind of, in some areas, has been brought to a, to a new level, uh, pun intended. Um, as in the heights, uh, like, mountains are tall, this, this giant volcano is, like, really big for how... Uh, relatively flat the, the train has been until now it's kind of fun yeah. to see the elevation changes also uh not too scared of of introducing these oh there's a red card Your forces are under attack. and you can just defend so yeah if you want to play around with this card you can also apply to be map tester and then you can just use this one to help with your testing and Let's clear out your very quickly. Okay, cool. But okay. Um, do you have more comments I, on the map? I, if not, I, I, lo I love how Hana is promoting the test strike instead of the map. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, I, just, that's, I think that's it for um, that. I mean, just wanted to give a kind of a showcase of some of the things we've been working on. Um, show off two of these. Um, we actually have two other maps, which I think are currently pretty far along development. We didn't want to show those off today. Um, one of them is another two-player map, but one of them is another. One of them is a one-player map, um, and they kind of focus on very different things. Um, the one map is actually very puzzle-based and has um, an interesting random element to it, uh, because the person, the player at the beginning of the map, will be kind of informed that there's six different pathways and that they are given one of those six pathways randomly um, to go through. And in that map. Um, kind of a spoiler, you actually face off against shadow enemies. So I think that'll be kind of cool because it'll be the first map where you actually see shadow enemies um, in any major sense. I mean, there's a few of them that appear in Dwarven Middle, but not really. And the other one is actually a um, one-player bandit map that also focuses heavily on defense um, and is supposed to be the background for one of the characters in the Empire map, the Ragged King. So that's they're both looking... They're both pretty far along. They're both looking very great, but they weren't far enough along yet that we wanted to show any screenshots off. Um, and a lot of that's because when we first make maps, we don't do the map art. And so while the map functionality is really there, the map art is not yet finished. And we kind of wanted to show off some of our more finished map art and how pretty things can really look. So yeah. Um... So much for the maps. As we said, they won't be hitting next patch, but sometime, hopefully in 2024. Um, now we'll move into a Q&A session. So if you have any questions which were still not answered as part of the stream, now's the time and we will hopefully get to all of your questions. And then after that, we will end with a nice outro with another small reveal. So it would be nice if you can just stick around, be a bit patient, ask some questions. Yeah, in the meantime, I already have some questions. I got them from Dutchie or from Capo before as well. Um, is there any plan to update already existing maps with secret paths or mini bosses? I think there will be a question for Windhunter, right? But can you yes. say that again? Uh, are there any plans to update the already existing maps with secret pathways or mini bosses? Um, I would say we have one such plan, maybe two, uh, but that's kind of it. In general, we, in general, we as a team have decided that you know we were going to make minor changes to some of the campaign maps, which we did. Um, for example, before the most you know the most recent changes to Convoy, Convoy only had an eighteen percent success rate on Expert, and we thought that was far too low. Um, in some other cases, you know. Maps were way too long. And so, for example, the average time to beat the map on Expert for Nightmare's End used to be 72 minutes. And we thought 72 minutes was far too long to be playing it. So we made some minor changes to the map and we were able to reduce the average play time from 72 minutes down to 48 minutes, which is still very long, but, you know, it's much more acceptable. 
Um, we are able to do very similar things for, say, Nightmare Shard, taking off about 10 minutes um, while leaving the map still difficult. And in general, kind of tweaks like this we're okay with, but we don't want to completely change existing maps because they're part of people's nostalgia, but also because they're part of what we inherited. And so we're willing to do like very minor improvements or to fix like kind of really major issues. Um, like I think we did for like say Convoy or Nightmare's End. Um, but in general, we don't want to change the structure of a map and we don't want to change kind of the core feeling of a map, which is why we're focusing on adding new maps and not changing existing maps. Also, it's just kind of more exciting to have a new map, in my opinion. And it's a lot of work to actually to change an existing map because we have to kind of decompile the scripts and kind of just hope that we know what we're doing. And the past has proved that we often break things without realizing it. All right. Um, someone is asking, well, two people are asking, are you also working on four player maps or 12 player maps? Uh, we are not working on any 12 player maps. Um, in general, I don't think the existing 12 player maps are that well designed. Um, I would say Passage to Darkness is the only existing map that I would be willing to do a kind of a large scale rework of. And that's because Passage to Darkness Expert has a 99.7% win rate. In fact, in the last two years, only six and six teams have failed Passage to Darkness um, if they got past the three minute mark out That's of impressive. something like 10 or 20,000 plays. Uh, so the map kind of is somewhat in that sense, but it's also a kind of, it can be kind of fun because it's easy and it gets a lot of gold. So, you know, we're, we are cognizant of not wanting to kind of change that too much. Um, but I'd say 12 player maps are not right now the focus, but we are definitely have plans for four player maps. Um, I can think of two in my head right now. They're not currently fully far enough along to talk about them though. Yeah, so just to clarify, because there was also a question about one-player maps. Of the four maps we currently have in active development, three are two-player and one is one-player, correct? Yes, we have three, two-player and one one-player. Um, though some of our plan, I think uh, probably two more of our plan maps currently are one-player maps. So there'll definitely be a good mix between one-player, two-player, and four-player. It just so happened that, you know, right now, the two-player maps are the ones that are farther along. All right. Um, will there be custom maps added to the main campaign map? I think that's a question for both Windhunter and Hannah. Um, I don't understand the question. Custom maps added to the campaign maps? Or what do you mean? Yeah, like, no, like, will there be community maps on the uh, world map of the campaign maps? Um, I don't think there's any current plans for that. I think it would be good for us, though, if we could make um, the campaign map kind of area more obvious um, because you can actually get some pretty good rewards now from the featured community maps. And I think it would be interesting. And we currently have plans for potentially adding some achievements for some of the existing featured community maps. Yeah. Um, so then that kind of makes them a soft official map without actually making them an official map, if that makes sense. Yeah, like the initial plans for those were, I think that rather than adding this new community map section with the feature maps was to add a second world map. But um, this turned into the plans of adding these like community maps, which are then featured in the community map section. So um, yeah, it's something that could possibly happen, but it's not something that's actively being worked on, especially now that community maps have gotten some love already. So yeah. All right. Um, did we already figure out where we are going to place the levels on the world map? <laughs> that's gonna get cramped uh no i mean i mean, I mean the, the thought we had for that in the past was that we can just like move on to a second world map right so we just click on a right button on the world map and then it shifts over to like a new area like at least to something that i talked about in the past don't think we ever really made this to like a proper design stage we always just kind of i don't know philosophize about this while we're just in a core developing and just thinking about stuff <laughs> but nothing right. is yeah, in think... a concrete plan stage yeah, there's no, there's no current plan. OK. Um, how will the new map or maps affect achievements? Will the, there be difference between those who have completed them and those who did not? I think they will be retroactive, right? Um, so the modifications to achievements will happen retroactively, but as completed achievements, they completed. Yes. All right. Yeah, um, exactly. 
on the we're not taking your, we're not taking your promo man away away <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, on the daily quest, it currently says complete the map on expert or higher. Are there plans to make higher difficulties? I believe this is mostly for RPVE that is still written like that, right? Or is it just an oversight? No, it's for some uh, quests where it actually says expert or higher. I mean, the reason it says expert or higher is just because this is a template text and we plug in a difficulty. So standard yep. or higher, advanced or higher, expert or higher. Um, the game actually in the past planned a higher difficulty than expert it's called very hard but um so far there are no plans to implement that because um yeah we just take a lot of time and honestly we it only cater to a very small percentage of the kind of player base um you can you can if if people are interested though in seeing how this plan was working out if you look at the crusade map you will notice that there's actually two more alleyways on crusade um and so that would lend itself very well for, say, like a you know very hard mode or an insane mode. Um, but that would be a lot of kind of design time on our side uh, for balancing that we personally right now think is better oriented towards new content. Yeah, one and of those in like a new map sense. Yeah, like one of those new contents uh, we could like add here is like the map modifiers, which were revealed in the um, Master of the Forge interview with uh, Capo, with Lada and me. So. Um, <sighs> That essentially also adds another difficulty modifier to um, campaign maps. So essentially, mm -hmm. you have an expert map, which then has some extra bonus. For example, like all enemies do 20% more damage active. And that makes these maps even harder, right? So like there is something to look forward to for veteran players who right now feel a bit under challenged by these expert campaign maps. Maybe there can be some more challenging content. All right. Um... Why don't you release new cards at lower rarities? That way they are not so expensive for the first months after release. I think we have a very nice document for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you uh, want to read about our rarity um, process, we actually look in our deep dives. We have a designing for card rarity document um, that talks about that. Um, right now, I think we could do a much better job of dealing with um, some of the price issues. We're currently looking into a way to, say, make Soulstone more available, especially because it's still sitting at a very high amount right now. Um, someone just posted it in the in the chat. That's great. Um, but right now, technically speaking, the initial the initial the original game release with three common cards, three uncommon cards, three rare cards, and one rare card, ultra rare card, as the kind of ratio. And we're kind of trying to restore this ratio um in some sense there's actually an under there, there's actually too little rare cards compared to what they're supposed to be in the game which is why you see so many cons releases rare um but we definitely are working on releasing more common and uncommon cards recently um because we can understand people thinking oh there's just been a lot of rare cards all right um are new achievements being looked upon or are there currently enough or even too much achievements I guess this is me again. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here's the thing. I, I personally would like to add a lot more achievements, but the issue is our UI. Um, I think, you know, right now our achievements UI, you just keep scrolling down this kind of giant list. And I don't think that's conducive for adding more achievements. Because right now it just kind of feels like it's like bloated. Um, you know, I would really like to add just recently on someone on the discord i think like a day or two ago was talking about like masteries for different factions and you know we have some of like we kind of have in some sense mastery quests but they're sitting at the very bottom and having them on their own tab i think would be kind of really cool and maybe having so like oh play a map with a level 120 deck that's pure nature and play a level 120 deck with the pure fires so and kind of like track not just oh i have one level 120 deck but i have one for each of the pure factions these are the hybrid factions um, you know, you know, beat the campaign on nature, beat it with fire. So people can like kind of keep track of their progress um, in that sense of like how well they're using each each deck and how much they're getting out of it. That'd be kind of cool. Um, I would love to add a lot more cosmetic achievements. We have a lot more achievement ideas, um, but I think we need to figure out the UI first because our current UI is just kind of pretty clunky and it's just not conducive for adding more achievements right now. So I think as soon as we can kind of work on UI stuff, I would I think there's plenty 
there's not only a lot more ideas, but there's like a lot more just kind of possibilities for new achievements and for, you know, new cosmetics and new stuff like that. Yeah, redesigning the, the achievements UI has been uh, personally a high on my list ever since it was made. Uh, it's really, like you mentioned, kind of linear in terms of scrolling, scrolling and scrolling. And it wasn't really meant for, for a huge amounts of uh, achievements to be presented in a nice way and try to amend it a bit with, you know, filtering and uh, ordering, uh, placing them in certain orders to make it more intuitive and uh, yeah, more easily presentable. But uh, it's, it's definitely, as you mentioned, definitely a, <laughs> a bottleneck uh, with introducing more achievements. Yeah, as you might notice, the quests are also an achievement at the moment are in the news tab of the game, which is like a bit weird, right? Because like why are achievements and stuff like that in the news tab? And that's mostly for legacy reasons. Like when we started out making these UI changes, we kind of tried to hook into these existing systems and then modify them a bit. And there this like news um, like UI element kind of lend itself pretty well to this modification. Whereas like these days we are like more having a actual development code base where we can work with the actual code and add proper new stuff. So in the past, you could say it was more like a modding thing where we added these quests and achievements, but now we could actually make it like a proper new window with like an actual modern UI view. I remember yeah, I, mean, had... I think kind of giving its own slot kind of like reforging would be huge. Yeah, I remember we had this, uh, this, this, this document actually, I believe, uh... Uh, actually, quite a while ago, where we were even th rethinking about designing the the top bar in the middle to present uh, uh, restructuring in it a bit to also allocate more and more space and kind of highlight more the the achievements and rewards and I think also the the cosmetics. But uh, it's 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 quite a bit of work and um, uh, yeah, there, there's there's always so many things to work on. But uh, yeah. I see a question for Hanna or Lara in the chat, I guess. Um, if we have any plans to make use of the um, um, new system requirements, but I'm pretty sure I know the answer to why we uh, updated those. I mean, um, there's no plan to make use of these new system requirements in terms of like the new CPU or GPU, because we don't have access to the source code of the game or like to a lot of parts of the source codes. So um, we can't really upgrade the game engine, so to say, to make the graphics look better or stuff like that. So in that sense, the requirements won't really be used, right? Um, the main thing that is changing though is the operating system. So um, in the past, um, Windows 7 used to be a pretty popular OS. But these days, uh, Windows 7 is actually not supported anymore by Microsoft and also major drop, major browsers have already dropped it. So in that sense, we also are kind of dropping support for Windows 7. The game should still function in theory if you still have an old installation of Windows 7, but we won't really be giving you any priority support for it anymore. Or in the past, we even rolled back updates to make sure Windows 7 still works. From now on, we'll just focus on the newer Windows versions, which are still supported and will be supported for the years to come. Um, question for Winter again, uh, and for me, I guess. <laughs> uh, are you going to add more promos since the models for many are already available in the RPVE bosses? For example, Giant Worm, Forest Elder, and Magma Fiend. Um, so if you notice, those cards have, in, in many cases, they have new 3d textures they don't always have new 2d artworks or at least um they don't have I, I would just say the npc artworks that we're willing to release so the artwork for an npc unit say like the new nature tempest unit uh we're we are ex willing for it to be a lower quality than the actual player artworks and so you might have noticed um, when we released things like even Twilight Slayers or the recently announced Lost Mana Beast, we actually updated the card artwork. And so we kind of have higher standards from our heart team for releasing them. And so for most of those cases with the promos, while we have the 3D textures and they could definitely work as inspiration, um, we lack the 2D artwork. And 2D artwork is actually a bigger bottleneck for us than 3D artwork. And so we 
definitely are going to add more promo cards. Um, but kind of one of the issues we run into is that new card artwork and promo card artwork, you know, kind of come from the same pot. So if we add a promo card, it means we don't get to add a new card. And so we kind of have to balance those, those things. But we definitely want to add more promo cards. Um, but we also don't want to add promo cards kind of too frequently because we don't we want them to remain kind of a special thing yeah this is also the reason why we had it uh, in the GV <laughs> survey and people answered yeah we want to see new promo cards but overall people want to see new cards even more <laughs> so we always try to find a little uh, a nice balance I'm fairly sure we'll see a new promo card in the new year at some point uh, but Les Windhunter already mentioned uh, we don't want to overdo it um Speaking of the survey, uh, we had a question about that. What is the aim for patches now? We got a question in the survey about smaller or bigger patches. Was there a final decision on that? And how often should we expect a patch? Um, to add some uh, more information about that, part of the question was also to figure out if people are OK with replays breaking, because that was, at, uh, at some point, the reason of not patching too often. Um, but I guess Hannah can also chime in on this. Uh, patching is quite hard <laughs> yeah. to uh, to get on a decent uh, decent basis with the voluntary team. Yeah, like the thing of smaller patches is if you always have like a small patch, one thing is, as Majora said, the replays break. So Battleforge essentially has this logic that it just tries to replay the exact steps which happened in the game and doesn't really save the game state, but like just the actions which the players took, right? So um, if you try to watch an old replay of a new ga game version, it's just these things. It means it, what you see on the screen is not what happened in the game. So that's one issue. And the second issue is if you have like lots of tiny patches, you don't really have anything to just create hype in a sense, right? Because if you just always pump out this small content, then it's nothing which really gives the players a reason to return, right? You want to have like kind of like these bigger patches so like players actually kind of get drawn back into the game and see oh my god they released like these three new campaign maps or two new campaign maps uh, i want to play this like um entire campaign right uh, which is better than just releasing the first map and the second map and the third map so we kind of want to just bundle these changes to give that like a meaningful thing in the patch yeah that makes sense um question for me i guess what do you guys think about the community and are they contributing enough and are they <coughs> nice enough uh well the fact that almost all of the staff members used to be community members uh gives a resounding yes to are they contributing enough um we did try out the the bounty system which wasn't that successful but we uh open source a task and uh get the community help on it um it's a bit tricky to find a balance about onboarding team members and having people do stuff outside of the team because we are always dependent on, on timelines and um, yeah it's really annoying if you're like working on something and then the person who is uh, helping you with it drops out uh, always happens with volunteers obviously but it's even trickier to keep track of if they're not part of the staff um, we're still trying to figure out how we can make that a bit easier uh, but overall, I think the community is absolutely awesome. Uh, the fact that you're all with us on our third anniversary already uh, goes to show that there's a lot of love uh, for the game. I'm not sure if anyone else wants to chime in on this. I believe not. <laughs> I mean, I guess, I then guess I will, nobody loves I, the community. I, I guess then I can add a bit, right? Like, the mini community is great, right? Without the community, the game wouldn't exist. Not only as staff members, but also as players, right? Like, if there's no player base, there's nobody to play multiplayer maps with, there's nobody to play PvP with, then what's the point of playing, right? And the other point is that most players which are really, like, active also become staff members, right? And this is also, like, really valuable for the project because... Um, as time goes on, people who are like staff right now will probably not have time anymore in a couple of years. Maybe they have uh, a new job. Maybe they have family to take care of, stuff like that. And we always need new pl new players in that sense and then always new, need new staff members to just keep the project alive. Um, in the chat, I posted a um, link here, which basically gives you an overview of um, just the positions we have available for the project. And then you can maybe just look at that, see if you have something which you find interesting. And yeah. I would also say, um, I don't 
people might not realize how much we actually take from the community itself. Um, for example, in you know the massive amount of achievements we released last January, about probably 60 to 70 percent of them were directly taken from community suggestions. And a lot of our most recent kind of quality of life changes that we've done, say like pause function in single player maps, or like the ability to change speed in the forge, those kind of things, those are all directly community suggestions that are given to us. And so we definitely function a lot off of kind of interacting with and asking the community and then trying to, you know, trust that the community kind of knows what it wants in some sense. Um, and so even though we are in a way like the guiding, like we're the final deciders of what we do with our resources because we're the you know leads of the project, um, you know, we kind of want to poll and talk to and get ideas from the community very frequently. And we make a lot of use of these. All right. Um, this might be a question for uh, Hanna or Lara, I guess. Uh, it would be cool if we were able to link cards in the in-game chat. Is anything like this planned? Well, I know it's not planned, but is it technically possible? How do you mean link cards? You mean like card auctions or? Uh, I guess they mean that if you like talk about a card, that you can bring up the card and know what it does. If, if you, yeah, have you played MMORPGs where you can like link your item in the chat, and then when you hover over it, you kind of I would expect in Battleforge you just see like whatever you see whenever you hover over the card in, uh, in uh, well in your inventory, you see a pop up and then the text next to it saying uh, you know what, what it does. Yeah, um, I guess something like that. Yeah. Probably could work, yeah. I mean, you can make like a yeah. clickable chat message, or like you can, I mean, you can like enable left clicking on chat message or enable right click, right click, play card or something if you have like a card name or something in there. Uh, surprisingly, a lot is possible. It's always just kind of a combination of how much time do you want to invest in it and how janky do you accept the code uh, for it to look like. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Um, and uh, I know, Hannah, I think uh, not too long ago you've, you you were playing a little bit with this, uh, and um, I think this is emotes, right. <laughs> yeah, with yeah. It, with emotes and uh, like uh, extending the chat and and elevating it uh, with these features is is not something I wouldn't say is not possible. Um, but uh, I guess it's it just becomes a a, a balance of. Uh, you know, is, is it worth the time and, uh, when you compare it to other features that we could be adding? Yeah, but like um, to add to this point, you can also just post any suggestions you have for the game in the forum we have or on the Discord. Um, I can also link that in the chat. Um, and for that, you can also just consider how it would like look like in game, right? Because like part of the feature design pro uh, process is also to kind of design a UI for it and then implement it. And in that sense, it also has to be nicely integrated because you don't want to just add like a big card here as a chat line, right? You could probably imagine something like if you write the card name, it's underlined and then you can play it in the forge or something. Yeah. But yeah, if you have concrete suggestions, just add them to the forum or on Discord and we'll talk with you. All right, sounds good. Um, question for, I guess, me and Windhunter mostly. Um, do we have a roadmap and is there any chance it will be made public? So yes, we have a roadmap, uh, will be made public. Uh... <laughs> the, the problem here is that it's I mean, that very tricky. Our... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we said so we definitely have a goal map, a roadmap. Um, you know, we've, we've announced some of the features we're currently working on. I mean, uh, we know our campaign maps, are definitely part of the roadmap, you know, fleshing out the, you know, some of the factions that be part of our roadmap. Um, you know, we try to announce at least a few months ahead of time some of the factions we're kind of working on, like we did for Lost Souls. Um, you know, obviously we're doing for, you know, Stonekin. Um, so we, that's like kind of card stuff. Um, but UI wise, you know, now we're working on like map modifiers feature. You know, I, you know, I would say I could, I'll find leaking something right now, you know, as I want to do is, you know, we're currently changing up campaign map stuff. And so next patch, you know, campaign maps will reward substantially more gold. In fact, we're changing to a gold over time system for campaign maps. And we're also adding gold on loss. So if, you know, you spent 40 minutes in a map and you lost, you're still going to get gold now. Um, 
And I would also say, you know, we're, we're trying to work on things that are going to help funnel players. And so, you know, we have happy hours for PVP. Um, we're kind of working on maybe doing something like a map of the day feature for PVE. And what this would do is, you know, a certain map that day would be on fire. And if you play that map, you know, you get extra rewards. And so the hope is it would kind of funnel players towards a different campaign map every day. Because right now, you know, a lot of players just automatically default to playing random PVE 9, random PVE 10. And so we want to kind of have a different option and kind of help funnel players towards different game modes. And so that's definitely something we're working on. Um, you know, we've talked in the past, you know, working on other things like Battle Arena, which I say, let's say is very close to done. Um, and we're also working on, you know, defensive random PVE. That's still kind of farther off. That was actually, it's been a very difficult development cycle for that to make it fun and good. Um, so there's a lot of stuff kind of going on. And we're trying to not just add new content, but we're trying to make use of the existing content. Like I said, you know, let's not just only play random PVE. I like random PVE, but let's get people actually be able to play campaign maps and reward them for doing so and, you know, add more stuff and add more game modes. So we're definitely, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, everything I said, is there any timeline on that? No. <laughs> um, and it's just really hard for us to say there's a timeline because, you know, a volunteer project like us, like, you know, sometimes we get, you know, literally six months worth of work done in two weeks and sometimes four months passes and nothing happens. It's just kind of how it goes. Yeah, to give a very concrete example, I believe the first new campaign map that we uh, have scrapped since then uh, was actually <laughs> planned for summer last year, I think. Um, yeah, so yeah. So yeah, yeah six months ago, what have, yeah, yeah. Oh, well. map designer had to leave, uh, stuff like that can happen, which is also why like we have an internal roadmap and even that swapped around two times already. So that's why we don't feel very comfortable like sharing it with the community. In that regard, we try to be like open in community updates what we're working on, um, but we're also like not telling a couple of things because we're still trying to figure out how we're working on it, if we can make it happen. Um, so it's it's too in flux to share. And while some of you are like, but you can just tell us, we'll deal with it like adults. <laughs> there are also people who are like very angry if we announce something and somehow can't make it happen. So that's why we are a little bit hesitant to. Um, reveal too much that we're unsure about yeah, yeah i mean i think uh, the Sorry, project also Anna. has like a history of just delaying patch dates for like the open beta and the closed beta and those are mistakes of the past which we don't want to repeat yes yeah, I, mean, I just say one last thing is a great example is our most recent card soulstone which i think has turned out phenomenally and i'm really kind of proud of um but you know when i when we first designed soulstone that was 28 months before it released Yep. So if we had announced Soulstone, people would have been waiting almost two and a half years for the card to come out. Like that's how many technical difficulties we're going to add to. Yeah, I mean, a most recent example of something similar for this is like the Lost Souls changes, right? They also had a couple of unexpected roadblocks. So the uh, announcement video went out like eight months ago, and now it's only being released uh, in January. So yeah delays like this can happen and it's sad when they happen but yeah the thing is for this uh, things like soulstone um they are partially caused by technical roadblocks which just means that some parts of the game have not been reverse engineered enough that we cannot modify them to a satisfying degree which left cards like for example soulstone without uh, spawn animations so if you know like these uh, spikes which come from the ground for soulstone those were just not there and we had to uh, reverse engineer some file formats to figure out how to add those. And once that became possible, it also allowed us to add other buildings in the future. In that same topic, someone asked what is happening to the new launcher that I don't even know if we like announced that lady, but basically we're working on a new updater and we've been working on it for a while and it's still planned for release, but we can't give a concrete release date, I believe. Yeah. So um, at the moment, I think there is like no active tool developer working on it. We have like two people in the updater team and both of them like are contributing towards it. But at the moment, it still kind of needs that final push to actually be released. And for that, we really appreciate it always if there's like more people to help, more people to take the initiative. And yeah, we always need more people, to be honest. <laughs> 
yeah one of the questions is is there anything you would like the community to do or what do you need the most uh, and there was also a, a separate question about uh, everyone always talks about marketing but what is actually happening and what are the future plans for that um marketing is hard marketing a volunteer project that you're not like um allowed to make a profit on or spend money on <laughs> uh it's very hard uh we rely on word of mouth uh and we kind of need like outreach coordinator to like reach out to influencers or magazines or whatever um but so far people are not really applying for that position so if you really want to help the project out uh and you have a bit of a network please consider uh, applying as outreach coordinator yeah, like the restriction is that essentially we don't spend money on advertising because like it's not our IP to advertise. So in that sense, we just rely on other people to actually just pick up this project by themselves. Like we tell them about it, right? But then on their own, they just pick it up and then play it and then share it with the audience. Yeah. And on that note, someone also asked if we have a Patreon. We used to have a Patreon. Yeah, we used to have a Patreon, but we uh, got enough money that uh, we basically have the servers covered for the next bunch of years. And basically, if you don't want to have like plans like marketing, right, with actual money, then there's no point to collect more money. So what's the point of having uh, donations you don't spend? Yeah. Um, a question for Windhunter and maybe Radical. Uh, I'm wondering if there is a chance of getting a better boss fight instead of the dumb kill the big bat. Um, he can attack and is immune. Um, I I guess I think our into the jungle boss fight's pretty good, personally speaking. Um, there's kind of issues just with Battle Forge in general. Um, you know, I would love to kind of fix up some of the boss fights for the original campaign mass, but like I said, I don't want to touch them too much. I just don't feel, kind of feel like it's right. Um, but we're definitely working on thinking of interesting boss mechanics. Um, we put a lot of thought into doing that with into the jungle's final boss fight, um, which we did not show because we didn't want to show because I think it's kind of one of the cool things we have set up. So I think we're definitely trying to think of ways and engage in mechanics um, that are not just walk up to the boss and smash it type of things. Um, you know, I would say even, you know, having kind of environmental effects that you have to dodge may be a good idea. Um, it's definitely something we're looking into. All right. Um, someone asked, can't we just put the game on Steam? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> we, we do not actually own the IP Battleforge. It's still EA. Uh, we are basically continuing the Skylar's Reborn project with their awareness and basically, yeah, they allow it. <laughs> as long as we don't make any money of it, which we don't. Um, but that's also the reason why we can't put it on Steam, because we don't own the game. Yeah, so basically it's kind of just like you're taking care mm -hmm. of this, like, uh, I don't know, abandoned child and just making sure it's, um, you know, well, well loved. But uh, we're not, it's like legal guardians or parents. All right. Um, design question for Windhunter. Um, after Frost turned out so nice and we now see work on Lost Souls and Stonekin, what is the future of nature? Uh, reworks of cards have started, but adding new one hasn't been happening for long. Are there any chance we see the nature rework finished or is it already finished? Um, is nature finished? No, um, but it's kind of hard to do. So we, what we kind of try to do is we look at each faction and we see if there's at least one kind of viable play style. And so when we looked at Lost Souls and we looked at nature and we looked at Frost, there really wasn't really a viable play style. I mean, you could play the cards but in terms of like legitimate not holding your not holding your team back in a multiplayer game or you know kind of being in a similar tier to some of the actually good decks it was not viable in that sense and so our goal design wise is to go through each of the factions to kind of create this at least one viable option and then we want to go back in and fill in afterwards um nature is just kind of really hard on honestly um we did the Root Network rework, which I think we did a great job with. I think Root Network is, you know, way more interesting to play with now. I love what happened to Sylvan Gate, for example. Um, and I think Forest Elder turned out great. So did Sanctuary. Uh, but I, you know, we still have planned changes for Colossus, you know, which I'm hoping probably not this patch, but maybe the patch afterwards, we can get that to happen. 
Um, you know, we tried probably five iterations of Grove Spirit, and I'm going to be honest, that's just a really hard card to balance. And, you know, we still have to figure out what we want to do with Forest Vim and Spore Launcher. And again, these are just like, they're just hard cards to balance. I mean, when you have four, when you have Razor Leaf, it's really hard to make a tier four root network card good. And so you kind of have to come up with some more unique ideas of how to do that. And, you know, we, we actually want to make the cards feel unique and feel interesting and feel worthwhile to play. And so we can make number changes, but like, if we don't think they're going to do anything, like in some sense, like what's the point? Um, so we definitely, I say at least Colossus will probably see a change and probably maybe again, not, probably not this patch, maybe the patch afterwards. So, so we kind of finish up nature's tier four in that sense. Um, but more than that, I know it's just kind of like as the thoughts come to us in some sense. Like so like good community suggestions can come sometimes, light ideas. Um but it's not a giant focus right now because there's at least a playable path through kind of nature. Um I mean you can see with Stonekin how we're kind of trying to create a second one because we have you know, we have like you can do a standard grinder plus Gemi um play style, but we're also adding with tectonic shift and bedrock the two announced cards we do there's going to be a kind of a, a tower style play um play style which you know that's kind of what i mean when we're adding additional play styles beyond just the first um but what factions get focused kind of depends how interesting the faction is like personally stonekin's not a super interesting faction so adding a second play style i thought was more um important to make kind of stonekin more interesting in that sense all right. Um, there were two questions that are basically already answered, but I'll answer them all <laughs> once more. Uh, happy hour for PVE would be amazing. That's basically the map of the day or month or week that you discussed already, Wind Hunter. So basically yep. the same idea, more rewards on the map if you play it at that point. Uh, is there any plan on adding defense or PVE? Yes, uh, but it's really hard and it's still in development and it's taking longer than we would have liked, uh, but we're still working on it. Uh, someone also asked, is PvPVE something you're working on? So basically, <laughs> PvP, but also PvE scenario. They so, gave an example from like Lord of the Rings, but I haven't played it myself. Um, um, that's not in development. Um, if Radical wants to do that, you can go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I mean... At the current point, we, we don't have plans for that. Um, I think there are some some interesting community maps out there that can cover that for some part. But I think it would be hard to, to make a PvPvE mode uh, like in an official way because um, like there are these there are these maps where I try to survive as uh, as long as possible. Um, and yeah, if you if you play like Shadow, for example, like the cards are just not really balanced around these type of scenarios. So that would be quite hard to do. But the concept itself is quite interesting. <laughs> I would agree with that. All right. Um, are there some plans for more smaller roles like map tester where the hurdle to be part of the team isn't that big? Uh, we touched upon this a little bit already. Anna Lara, I don't know if we have anything planned there, but it's always really tricky to have like people help but not be reliable <laughs> i think this uh, easiest role here is yeah. just the translation roles to be honest like um essentially just uh translating the game from english to german french and russian <clears throat> at the moment there are no additional languages planned but maybe in the future there could be another language but nothing is planned at the moment and right. i would argue from uh, there's kind of uh, 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 it's kind of difficult in the sense of um, the, the more, well, if you're in a state where you need the help, because, uh, well, we want to do more than we, than we currently can. Um, you you want to add more people, but the more you add people, the more also um, administrative overhead there becomes, and communicating and 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 delegating the work, and you know, overseeing everything. Um, and at least personally, I'm always. Uh, personally, always more of a fan of 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 uh, contributions where it's a little more long lasting in a way. Um, as in, for example, just to to name an example, if we look at uh, a developer position, um, 
there's of course we have uh, multiple different ways where you can contribute like the open source but a lot of there's a lot of investment and uh from both sides um that goes into the role uh before we you know before you can get really to a level where um, some serious contributions can be made and um that's a bit extra tricky with positions that are uh, when you kind of want to contribute a little more on the go, just a little a small contribution and then move on. Uh, because there's this, this certain overhead um, to get into the role, to manage, you know, the role itself. And um, it's, it's, it's always been a struggle to, um, to in a way, uh, bring up, uh, you know, the, the, the people in these roles to, to teach them to... Uh, to 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 work together and to into getting them into the role such that they can become become you know long time contributors because um, it requires honestly um it's it's even though it's all a, a hobby project there's still you know we still want to uh there's still in the end of the day uh content that we would like to push out and you know that's also why uh we have these internal roadmaps, but we can't make them public because there's a bit too much uncertainty in in in, um, in, in, in how how feasible it is to actually make it happen. And it's these these consistent contributions that make it possible to make it more likely that we end up having a, a public roadmap because it's the inconsistency that makes things really difficult. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, there was a question earlier in the chat, what the motivation for all of us is to make Skylords uh, reborn, basically. Um, I think the uh, longer answer, if you want that, would be to check out the Master of the Forge podcast series from Capo. You can see it on the forum. Maybe Dutchie can link it as well. Uh, he interviewed most of the, well, not most, but most of the departments of the staff. I think we currently have like 10 episodes. Um, where most of us, I think we have all been on there at this point. Um, also going to, um, yeah, our own personal attachment to Skylar's Reborn. Um, I think that's a more thorough answer, answer than we can give you uh, at this point, also to keep it a bit short. Um, yeah, and there was a question, uh, are there any more plans for uh, new nature or shadow units? So maybe that's a nice uh, segue uh, towards the end of the stream. Because we have one little teaser left for um, you guys. Yeah, I'd say do we definitely have some plans and do we have something to show off maybe? I mean, I think so. Um, I mean, do you want to show them off? We can say goodbye and then, you know, just give them the last goodies. Let's, Let's do that. Me. So, yeah. All right. Um, thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, the stream is not over yet. We will go into a short video after this um, with a small reveal. But thanks again a lot for just watching for these past 100 minutes. And as we said, the patch is around uh, probably in January. And um, you will just hear more about this in the coming weeks and in the community update. So yeah, see you soon in the Forge. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks. See ya. Thanks, bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye.